what's going on y'all it's mikey t the movie star i'm here and you know due to everybody's overwhelming support of the last exclusive you know where i was uh reading the uh testimony the court menace of dantes stewart against ar ab and the a obh camp i figured i should give you all a little bit more insight some people didn't really i'm gonna leave a link actually in the description so y'all can go and read the whole thing for yourself it's pretty long pretty descriptive but i think we should just get back into it uh they were still questioning uh dantes the first time you went to the mansion how many days in a row did you go to the mansion and tez replied probably every other day and remember this is when he's actually building his trust with the group so he's looking just to make a name for himself uh what would you do when you went there sit down chill they asked, uh, what, were you, what were you hoping? Did you like sitting down and chilling? See, that's what a lot of these guys will do. They'll just go hang out with their favorite rapper. Even Ab and Cassidy, you know, Cassidy had Ab sitting down for a number of months telling him, Ab, I'm going to make you a millionaire. Ab, I'm going to, Ab, don't, don't touch any of Lil Cass's cookies but I'm going to make you a millionaire. See, that's a common thing. A lot of uh, artists will go and they'll work with somebody and they'll just sit down. They'll sit back, they'll smoke, they'll drink, sip lean, you know, liquor lean, whatever. Um, and that was a prime example of what Tez was doing. A leech, a linger, a bystander, somebody watching. Whereas you had a dark low who came and joined OBH and made a name for himself. He came into the group. He, he started working in the studio. He started putting videos out. He started building re positive relationships. And he started blossoming. And he was a future millionaire in this business. A lot of respect from some of the biggest in the game. But anyway, so let's get back into it. Was um, Tez there just to sit and chill? What were you hoping? Did you like sitting down and chilling? No, not really. Why not? It's too many people in there. I don't really know them. So on several, well, on every other day going to the mansion, were you provided with any narcotics to sell? No, not in the beginning. Tell us how that changed. I approached Abdul West myself, A.R. Ab. And what did you say to him? I told him I needed some coke. I'm trying to get some work. And his response to you was what? All right, I got you. Say that again? All right, I got you. Do you remember around what time this happened? No, I don't. Not like on a clock, like a date. Is this in 2016? Is it in 2015? 16, Tez responds. When did you get that tattoo on your neck? OBH tattoo on his neck. 2016. Really quick to get a tattoo on your neck, dude. He, he, like I said, this guy was a leech. He wanted to join up with a clique. This is probably like him thinking he's joining G-Unit or something back in the day. He probably feels like he's joining Death Row or, or Bad Boy 1996. This guy has just come out of jail. He's delusional. So uh, when did you get the tattoo on your neck? 2016. Around what time? Do you know? Like around May. Why did you get it? Just to show them that you know I was a part of you know, what a part of they what they were. When you say they're a part of, just to be clear, you're not a rapper, sir. I don't rap, no. You're not a music producer? No, not at all. Are you involved in any legitimate business with the original block hustlers? No. What was your business with original block hustlers? Sell Coke and be on call. Let's talk about some people that may have been at the mansion. You ever seen someone you know as Shadi at the mansion? Yeah. What's his real name, if you know? And he gives his government away right away. Daryl Baker. Did he have a specific role in original block hustlers? He was like, probably like a lieutenant. A lieutenant? Uh-huh. What makes you say that? Because he stayed there and he handed all the business when Abdul West wasn't there. So he just put it out there as a... Uh, uh, Shaddy, Daryl Baker, as being a uh, right-hand man to Abdul West. Um, I've actually never met Shaddy in real life, so I can't comment on that. As you guys know, uh, 
being a viewer of the music, we all look at Dark Low as Arab's right hand man when it comes to the music industry, hence the goon and the crook. I don't know this guy shoddy. Anyways, the court wants him to talk a little closer to the microphone. They want him to move his chair up. They want him to say the part again that uh, Daryl Baker was a lieutenant. What makes you say that? They asked him. He carried out, when Abdul West wasn't there, he carried out, you know, the business-wise, like dealing with the coke, the crack, the money that was being transferred from outside, from the streets to, you know. Would you see the money transactions occur in the mansion? I had seen it before. And Daryl Baker, you said he was involved in the narcotics transactions. Did you see that as well? Yeah. Well, what did he do? He would pass coke to the street runners in the bags and count the money up. What are street runners? I guess we're going to get to know some street terms in this testimony. Corner boys, question. Corner boys. Yeah, pack boys. What are their jobs? They get drugs from the mansion. You know, Abdul West, if not shoddy. If not him, shoddy. Shade, maybe it's shoddy. How about someone by the name that goes by Ka Kazi? Kazi or Kazi. Ever seen him at the mansion? Then we get an objection from Mr. Huge, who I want to say is probably Kazi's manager. His, that whole thing, I'll read that to you in a little bit. Kazi's, um, excuse me, his manager, his lawyer. I'll read that whole briefing with Kazi's lawyer and Taz or Tez in a few seconds. So how do you spell that? It's Kaz, K-H-A-Z. You ever spoke to someone you know as Kazi at the mansion? Yeah. Do you know what Kazi's real name is? Jamal. Do you see Jamal in the courtroom here today? Yeah. Do you want to point him out and identify an article of clothing he's wearing? Light-skinned with the blue suit on. The court, he indicated Jamal Blanding. Very interesting is that um, uh, Jamal Blanding, Kazi's wearing a blue suit. And then they asked him, can you tell me where Abdul West is sitting? He's sitting at the table with the black suit on, Taz points out. Uh, Arab is wearing a black suit. And um, so then they asked, what was Kazi's role in OBH? Honestly, he was just around, I don't know. How about someone you know as Meliano or OG? Do you know that person? Taz responds, I don't know him. I've seen him a few times. Where did you see him? Very interesting that the uh, two guys, two major guys in this case, and Taz doesn't know much about him. It seems to me like Taz only knows a thing or two about the celebrity rapper that he probably read a few articles about while he was locked up, and then he heard everybody in Philly talking about. If you ask me, that's what it seems like. He doesn't know Miliano. He didn't have a conversation with Kaz. So then they, uh, they reveal where the mansion's actually located. Um, and then um, they actually ask him uh, another defendant, uh, Hickson. He was in a brown suit. Yep. Yep, so Meliano was in a brown suit. You had Kazi in a blue suit and Ab in a black suit. Just to clear that up for anybody who wasn't there. Obviously, a lot of you guys weren't there. So they were all suited up. Interesting to note that uh, Braz, No Breaks Braz, Free Braz, he was only wearing, a, I think he was wearing a white tee and some glasses. Um, so they asked, do you know an individual that went by the name of No Breaks Braz? Yeah. Do you know what his real name is? Han. Han? Yeah. Do you see him in the courtroom here today? Yeah. Do you want to tell the judge and the jury where he's sitting? He's sitting on the far right with the glasses on, with a white shirt. And then he in, in indicated uh, Han Gadsden, I guess. It's just labeled Gadsden here, but I guess that's uh, No Breaks is Braz's first name. No Interesting note about No Breaks Braz. He actually caught the attention of BET at one of Jack Thriller's events, and BET actually... Tw uh, tweeted him from their Twitter account back in like 2015. He was one of the dopest spitters I ever met. So then they brought up Mulas, Free Mulas. That's Ab's younger brother. He, uh, what's his real name? He doesn't remember. Uh, what did you used to call him? Mula. What was his role in the organization? He sold clothes. He sold weed. What kind of clothes would he sell? OBH clothes. I bet you Taz probably got a few 
items from OBH clothing for free. So that's where that comes from. And, and who knows, probably Moolah gave Taz some free weed since Taz has such a major marijuana issue. You know what I mean? It's just ridiculous to me that he's going to use kind things that people do for him. The guy gives him a, a, a few jumpsuits to wear so he doesn't have to wear dirty clothes throughout the whole months. And then he gives him some, some weed and, and he turns state evidence against him. Now, you said you first started selling for Abdul West in 2016. Do you mind telling the jury how this worked? Do you have to pay for it? How much of it were you getting in the beginning? Now, this is really where he starts to break down the specifics of the case. This is where he starts to break down the specifics of his relationship with ARAB. In the beginning, I would get fronted work. Get fronted like an ounce. Sell that. Knock that off. Come back. Hand out the money. If he's not around, hand no big spas the money. Hook back up with either. So now it's gone from shoddy to no breaks bras. I just want everybody to keep that in their mind. He said it was shoddy or Abdul, A.R. Ab in the first place. But now it's no breaks bras or Ab getting the money. I just want to point that out if we're talking inconsistencies. Um, he said he would hit up no breaks bras if he couldn't get in contact with Abdul West. So when you say coke, are you referring to the powder cocaine or crack cocaine? Crack. How much crack were you moving for Abdul West in, let's say, a week? Probably like two ounces. Ever since 2016? Yeah. How would you get it? Would you just have to show up at the mansion? Were there rules involved in this? Yeah, I would call Abdul West and meet him at the mansion. If I couldn't get there to the mansion, I'll meet Braz at another location. The condo's on 18th and Tiaga. You would meet Braz at the condo's? Yeah. Did you ever call Braz directly? Yeah. But the rules, not the rules. Did you have to call Abdul West first? I guess they insinuate that the uh, the rules were that before any of Arab's men would make a move that they would all have to uh, correspond with Arab, which Taz is here is clarifying. And he says, did you have to call Abdul West first? All the time. Tell me why. It had to be ran through him first. If he wasn't around, he would send you to somebody else. No, he would send me to Braz. So you're moving two ounces a week. How many times would you say you got that from Abdul West as opposed to Hans Gadsen? How many times would West give you the crack cocaine as opposed to no breaks Braz? Abdul West, he would give it to me whenever he was around. West would give it to you every time he was available? Yeah. Can you guess how many times you got it from Braz? And then there's an objection because uh, they don't want the term guess used. Can you estimate? And then they don't like that term either. I guess they don't like uh, in court you're not supposed to use terms where you're guessing at an amount or you're even estimating an amount. If you know something, you say it. If you don't know something, you can't really speak on it. I wouldn't know. I've never given a court testimony. So uh, Taz actually explained what a front was. Uh, they asked, where would you, you said before that you got fronted it. Just to tell the jury what you mean, what does it mean to be fronted narcotics? A front is, I'll give you this, and when you're done, bring it back. You know, bring the money back when you're done, the product. So you'd get narcotics for free, and your job was to sell them and bring back the money. Right. How much would you sell the two ounces a week for? I would bag it all up, chop it all up, and do what with it? And sell it around the northeast slash Frankfurt area. And how much would you make? How much would you sell it for? Off an ounce, I would bag up anywhere from 2500 to 3500 an ounce and bring back to Abdul West or No Breaks Bras $1,000. Wow. If you didn't get a little bit of the black market street like stuff from right there, I guess I owe is $1,000. But this guy, I don't think... I don't think this guy could make $3,500 off of that. That just doesn't make sense to me. I did the multiplication. Even if you do halfies for $40 a pop, you're only going to make like $2,200. You know what I mean? Like, So I don't think that is really uh, significant. I don't think Taz is really telling the truth. I think this guy is bolstering his own image on the damn stand. How freaking retarded is that? This guy's trying to make himself sound... Taz, I hate to break it to you. You're never going to be nothing in life. You're never going to be nothing in life. This is it for you. This is your 15 minutes of fame snitching on ARAB.
guy saying I was making like three grand and you would get in were you getting uh two ounces a week like a certain day or did you go back multiple times a week to get the two ounces I go back whenever as needed whenever I needed it if I run out Thursday I have Thursday or Friday night if I had an ounce and I knew I was going to sell out before Friday I would call before Friday so I won't have to keep running back and forth now this two ounces a week when you had to make payment for the narcotics that you were given who would you make payments to Whoever I would meet with. Who would that be? Abdul West or Browse. Those were the two people? Right. Give money to anybody else in the organization, they asked? No. Now let's talk about this continued up until your arrest in November 2017. Oh, excuse me. Now let's talk about this continued up until your arrest in November of 2017. Correct. Let's talk about October 13, 2017. There, there come a time where you were contacted by Abdul West. Now, this is where the story really gets serious. This is where the story brings an implication of taking someone's life. Um, so up until this point of October, uh, they make the statement that Taz has still been doing that two O's a week for Ab, running back and forth, running back and forth. But now on October 13th, apparently Abdul West, A.R. Ab, called Taz to meet him. How did he get in contact with you? He called on the phone. And what did he say to you? He said he needed me to do something for him. He gave me an address and told me to come to this address. I put it in the iPhone and I followed the location and met him on a little block. Do you know what that street was? Marvin Street. Do you remember what time you were contacted by Abdul West? Six, seven. Six or seven on October 13, 2017. Right. Was it normal for Abdul West to call you and tell you he needed you to do something? No. Had he ever done that before? No. Did you meet with Mr. West? Yeah. It was on Marvin Street? Yeah. Do you remember what time you got there? Probably think it was eight-ish. Okay. All right. So, uh, Abdul contacted him six or seven, probably seven, and he, he got there and met up with him at eight, so that's where we are. They asked, what car were you driving? Apparently, he was driving a black Nissan Altima. When you got there, tell the members of the jury what you saw. It was Abdul West, Shadi, sitting in a black Challenger with some of the other dudes outside the car talking with them. Activity going on on the block. What did you do? I got out of the car and I approached their vehicle. Their vehicle. Did you have a weapon on you at the time? Yeah. Was it common for you to have a gun? Yeah. Common for a lot of people at the mansion to have weapons? Yeah. When you got, did you actually have a conversation with Abdul West and you said Shadi was there as well? Yeah. Who was sitting in the driver's seat of the black Challenger? Abdul West was in the driver's seat. Shadi was in the passenger seat. Tell us about the conversation you had with him. This is where it gets really, really sick, guys. I really kind of almost feel uncomfortable reading this. I don't believe this whatsoever. I don't know why a thriving artist like Arab who just spent $25,000 on a music video to shoot a video, a major video for MTV, would resort to these measure, measures. They asked, tell us about the conversation you had with him. I approached the car and Abdul West, he said he needed me to take somebody out. So I asked him, all right. And Abdul West and Shadi was going through, you know, plans on how for me to carry out the hit. What do you mean they were going through plans? Abdul West, he wanted me to shoot him in the head. Shadi told him, no, I'm going to have him somewhere with me. And you just come up and, you know, you just shoot him. So you guys were discussing about planning to murder somebody? Did they tell you who this person was? They was discussing the plan, and I was just listening, waiting. What were they saying to each other? At one point, Abdul West said he did it this way. Shadi didn't agree, and Shadi said to do it that way. I guess Abdul West ain't agree. And then Abdul West told me to give me my phone, give him my phone, and he DM'd the guy who was the target. Did they tell you who the person was? Yeah. What did they say? They said he asked me, did I know who Robbie was? I told him no. I told Abdul West no. He was like, be in the mansion with us. He was like, he'd be in the mansion with us. He showed me a picture of him, and I'm like, yeah, I know him. He told me I, I, he needed me to, you know. Shoot him in the head. I said, how am I going to do that? I don't even know the guy. And he said he was going to set it up to where I'm going to act like I'm getting some, making a drug transaction off of him, getting some meth. 
So what did he do, Mr. West? How did he set up that drug transaction? He DM'd him off the phone. What phone? Off my phone. Wow. Taz, you are an idiot. Your phone? You're definitely going down for this. It's no wonder that you did the act on October 13th and you got arrested on November 17th. It's no wonder. Do you have an Instagram account? No, I ain't got one. How did he do it? My baby mom had got one. So he took your phone and did what? He logged in and I don't use Instagram. So I wouldn't know how to. But he got my phone and logged in just to use my phone for the target, which was Robbie Johnson. How did you meet Robbie Johnson prior to that? I seen him around in the studio one time. That's it. What studio? 444. Four, four. What's that? The Bat Cave. Really? You got to put the Bat Cave out later like that, bro? You is a rat. Have you been there before? A few times. We'll come back to that in a moment. Do you remember the Instagram account that was used for the phone? All right. No, no reason to really read through this stuff. That is girl's Instagram account. It's kind of obnoxious. It's a really ridiculous situation, to be honest with you, and I don't believe it. I think this guy is just talking jazz, to be honest with you. It's just BS. If you guys really want me to read the confrontation that he ended up having with Robbie Johnson, I'll do it. I'll do it. There's a lot more to this story. There's a real lot more to this story, and I'd like to get into it, but I just hope we can do that in a calm, cool, professional manner. I hope everybody uh, can respect what I'm doing here. I don't think it's right what's happening to AR Ab. Hopefully everything is going to go well for him in his appeal because I think there's a lot of inaccuracies in what's happening in this testimony. Free the men, though. Free AR Ab. Free Dark Low. Salute to my guys at OBH. Philly is the mecca of hip-hop. Mikey T, the movie star here. Please subscribe if you're not already.